season three, <laughs> episode two. Uh, we've got Tess here. You are in marketing, correct? Correct. Specifically due to real estate? Yeah, so I do marketing for the commercial real estate industry. Awesome. This is going to be a show dominated by uh, you and, I mean, I'm not marketing. I'm not marketing at all. So it's going to be basically Natasha and you going back and forth, talking about your expertise on marketing. And I'm just going to sit back and listen for the most part. Um, <laughs> well, Marcus, I also do real estate. So I have my brokers, I have my license. And so I actually do both sides. And that's the fun. I appreciate, I appreciate you bringing me into the conversation. <laughs> Thank <My> you. Pleasure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously Natasha does all the marketing uh, behind the scenes. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, any marketing material, mailing, all of that is right up Natasha's alley. Um, and then I'm basically in the field doing that stuff. So uh, a good combo with you, Tessa, here. Um, we can kind of learn from you. Um, you can kind of share what you do with your business and your clients. Um, and hopefully our viewers get something from it and can contact you and um, mutually beneficial, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, a little background of the podcast. I come in cold. I want to ask the questions that people that don't know about marketing would ask. So, um, and I see you have your puppy. So we're going to do a little segue here because I actually oh, yeah. brought mine with me. Oh, oh my gosh. The word puppy in the back seat. I, that's a, so sweet. My girls are in the other Fresh out of surgery. Because I have Aww. contractors. Who? Huh? I said, my girls are in the other room because I have contractors coming after this. Uh, Mom. <laughs> darn. Um, well, in a bizarre twist of the start of a show, Natasha, I'm going to let you start it because the HVAC guy just got here. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Tressa. Um, Marcus always likes to start out the show asking um, about your background. How'd you get here? Um, like, you can do a little bit of personal, a little bit of professional, kind of just give us your your little little intro absolutely so I guess at one thanks for having me on here this is kind of exciting um so I am actually originally from Detroit Michigan and I always say that because I think it's really important where you're from and being okay. able to live and be in different places in the country uh, I went to college in Chicago and lived there for a couple of years and then ended up moving out to Park City, Utah. So I live wow. in the mountains oh, fun. and I always wanted to create a career that allowed me to live where I wanted in yeah. nature, but also live by a, a international airport where I can hop around to any city I want to be For in. Sure. <laughs> Holy get that. So that was like, yeah. So that's like the ultimate goal. And then, which I accomplished thankfully. And then I actually was always in entrepreneurship. That was my ma my major in college. And then my minor was graphic design. So I was always learning about business and some type of creative art background. So you always knew and you wanted to be your own boss. Always. I don't, you know, I don't think there was any a day, a day that didn't go by I grew up with a family that they all owned their own business oh so was, that makes a huge difference I was gonna say I had no idea that there was even a major of entrepreneurship in college mm -hmm. I just went the photography route like I don't think there was because I ended up finishing at a school in Michigan that it was at the time right this is like 10 15 years ago at the time was the only college that had a true undergrad program so it wasn't a specialized program it wasn't a master's program it was actually just undergrad and when I found out they had that program I was like all right I'm leaving Chicago I'm gonna go back and yeah. do entrepreneurship and I use it every day who would have thought so jealous of you yeah no I've owned this is like my second or third business so I'm so jealous it, well, you're, you're learning every day, right? It, oh, for the sure. real education is getting in, is getting into it. hundred percent. It just would have been nice like for the first one to be like, oh, well, I kind of know what I'm doing as opposed to being yeah. like, ah. <laughs> for sure. So yeah. So now I'm in park city and I think job after job was always creative or business 
oriented, but um, about five years ago, well, I used to work for U.S. Foods doing oh, food distribution cool. in the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. And so learned about how that worked, which was incredible, um, but ended up during that process meeting a woman who was in real estate and commercial out here. Mm -hmm. And she was like, why don't you come work for me? And I'll teach you about commercial. Cool. And I do, I do restaurants. So she does tenant Sweet. work for a restaurant group, which I was already in that food and distribution. Yeah. So it all kind of layered and intertwined. And then I quit my job, worked for her full time and I'm still under her brokerage. So she's, wow. and she's like one of my best friends and it all worked out. But during COVID, oh gosh, restaurants, you know, like hit the name. It was bad. It like yeah. everybody went under or everybody mm -hmm. shut down. It was really yeah. hard. Right. And so I, my husband's in the, was in the uh, country club industry. Oh yeah. So there was a lot of pivoting, a lot of like, what are we doing? You know? Yeah. I got it. That's all it was. Yeah. And I think, you know, every single person in the industry in every industry was like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I kind of made a little change because like I, I started looking at other brokerages to work for, but mm -hmm. I don't like the traditional route. I right. didn't like what it looks like it's a little too old school for me. So I ended up just starting my own business and then staying partnered with That's my great. broker. That's really awesome that you were able to kind of weave your way into the world of real estate. I feel it kind of like encompasses everybody's journey in the real estate. It's very few and far between that people know a hundred percent that real estate is where they want to go, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if I even knew that's where I wanted, but I was, I love it. Mm -hmm. I have a true love for cities and different environments, knowing like how they're created and developed. And unfortunately I feel like part of the country doesn't care about the true city planning of a, you know, of a city. Like, why do you put a bookstore there? And why do you put a restaurant or a grocery right. store there? I, I think there's a lot of, uh, time and effort that needs to go into it. So that's what I was attracted to. I love it. Each person has their own way their brain works and how they see the world and like how they want to make it work for them too. Exactly. Yeah. I'm back. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm going to jump in. The, Hi, the city planning. Hey, HVAC <laughs> is underway and we're going. So it's good. Um, but uh, I jumped in, you were talking about city planning. That is honestly where I started real estate. Um, oh. I've been listening to like podcasts and all that stuff. And they kept talking about zoning and zoning and zoning. And I was like, all right, how complex is this zoning <clears throat> that they keep talking about? Um, so the broker that I'd worked for was like, oh, you should go to a city planning meeting. And I was like, okay, sounds good. Um, and we went and they're talking about all the different, um, like how they put together the city in their their 10 year plan and their 20 year plan of how they want to develop parts of the city and what's going to go where and where the shopping centers are going to go, where the high density housing is going to go, where the single family housing is going to go. And that stuff was just super cool. And then you can change zoning. Mm -hmm. right. Like it's, it's fascinating stuff because <clears throat> it opens up so many different avenues for me, like a buy and hold investor. Um, the second, yeah, the second property I bought actually was a single family zoning which i'm gonna split the lot and then get a conditional use to put a duplex on each one and then the city is going to allow it as long as it looks from the street appeal as a single family home <clears throat> right so so many little nuances but that alone is going to allow me to cash flow on this one property this one purchase just because you kind of get entrenched with how the zoning goes and how you can actually use that to your advantage. And it opens up so many doors. Um, we've got, you'll, you'll drive past houses that you won't realize are zoned as commercial, but they'll look mm -hmm. like regular homes. Yep. Um, oh yeah. And everybody, Especially everybody can towns. go in their yes. city and pull up their map. Like you can right. pull up the map of your city and it'll tell you exactly what's zoned where. Mm -hmm. So that stuff is super fascinating. Yeah, I, agree. I would agree. 
I mean, I remember uh, even, I, I'm on the opposite end because I, I owned a brick and mortar business and I was the one applying for the conditional use permits and for the zoning and all that stuff. So it was, I remember being on the other side of it and it was quite a, quite a, quite a ride. Yeah. Well, there's oh, yeah. this company. So through COVID and whenever, because everything's remote, I did the best I could to reach out to people and connect. And there's this company called Pedal Retail or Pedal Re Real yep. Estate. And they're out of Washington, DC. And they specifically, um, and sh the owners are amazing. And they specifically work with uh, brick and mortar who need help. How do you figure out the zoning? How do you create the business plan? And wow. I think through COVID, people are realizing there's not enough resources for these small businesses mm -hmm. and to make them successful mm -hmm. or to help them say like you, I don't know, did you have any resources or somebody to help advise you? Oh my goodness. No, I was, it was all, right. not, I mean, I would, I went and found a business plan online and I like researched everything left, right and center that I could, but no, I mean, I had no idea where to start besides Hey, CFO of the bank, here's the business plan I wrote. Will you look at it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's tough for you. Like you were running a business. You weren't running real estate. No. So like you got to focus your energy on running your business to take on the whole animal that is real estate. That's a right. whole different subsect that you're dealing with, um, which is where those companies or like commercial brokers would come in and hopefully help out. But I mean, to talk to a yeah. broker about, a conditional use or, or that part i don't know no, if i didn't even work, as a client i didn't even work with a broker at that point yeah so it was just me searching out the person whose building i wanted to rent saying hey can i rent the building and then you can go into the city and be like i may not have all the paperwork right yeah i may not have checked the correct box but i've got cute puppies that you can come look at anytime <laughs> marcus you know our city planner he's amazing he is like yeah, a he is. helpful kind person if it wasn't for him i would have been up a creek without a paddle <laughs> yeah yeah our city planner is the guy that like when you stop by his office he's like yeah come in and sit down and he'll pull out <laughs> like, the map of the city and yeah. he's got this big whiteboard that he'll draw on and be like hey keep note of all these things and like mm -hmm. he's just a wealth of knowledge and super friendly, Yep, which is See, good. Th those are the people you want in that governmental sector in your you know, area. I wish sometimes yeah. we had that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it's inspectors, those, those people too, yeah. if you can find good inspectors. Um, Cause yeah, they're, they're doing like, the hard work. I feel like city mm -hmm. planner from my experience, city planner is good cop inspector is bad cop yes and you just get to deal with both and you try to make both of them your best friend yeah also the inspectors i feel like they're not given enough credit because it's not they're randomly picked it's not like you get to choose the person and build a relationship they're more or less randomly picked and yeah. i feel bad they give the bad news like you said <laughs> yeah. right and it's not their fault they're hey this is the rules i'm just the referee yeah, he's just doing yeah. his job. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and kudos to all inspectors out there. If you have to go through the course, the reading material on becoming an inspector is insane. Yeah, so you've oh. done it? No. I haven't done I've just talked to a lot oh. of inspectors and I've Got seen it. their stacks of, of work that they need to get through. Um, I mean, you've got specialists in HVAC, you've got specialists in electrical, You've got specialists in finish. You got specialists in rough. You've got specialists in roof. Like every part of the house is specialized. And then here comes the inspector that's like, I know all of it, or I'm supposed to know all of it. Yeah. Like that's a that's a wide gamut of knowledge that you need to know, uh, especially like to know the codes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, kudos to them on that. So. Um, <laughs> I might have missed the beginning. Did you start out in marketing or did you start out with um, real estate or broker? Uh, I started out in uh, doing, well, I started out in marketing. I worked for a food distribution company and then um, learned about really, the, well, before that, worked for a pickling company. So I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. 
and I helped a pickling company get into grocery stores. So I learned about manufacturing and marketing there, then went to food. Yeah. That was like probably one of my best jobs I've ever had. It was so fun. Yeah. Cause I traveled around the country to trade shows and Fun. met like the head of Costco and Whole Foods and all these like big wigs. It was really, really fun. And then like now I love Costco because I know so much about their corporate and I know the corporate company. I like, like they're great people and they treat their employees well. So, you know, kudos to Costco, but then, um, went to us foods, which is distribution and worked in hospitals and healthcare. And then move to real estate and restaurants. See, I feel like real estate, everybody's always, it's always everybody's like third career. You know, it's like, it's the yeah. first choice, except for the rare few that it is their first choice. And I, I don't think we've you. had a single guest come on and be like, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a real estate investor. We had one. We had one. Who was it? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I remember being like, oh, nobody wants to get into real estate. And he's like, actually I did. And I was like, oh, foot and mouth. So, well, so I, I have two, I yeah, I have two friends out of college that they both wanted to go. One went to commercial because his dad did it. One went into residential because my school had such a great program. And it's funny because if there's any conversation I've had with other brokers, say, you know, 40 and up, is they're like, how do we get these kids in high school to want to go into real estate out of college? Yeah. Yeah. And I've been trying to think of with high schools now, before (laughs) I did real estate, I was in fundraising and I did a lot of work with high schools around Wisconsin. In high schools now, from when I was in high school, like their shop and their building department, like the school in our local uh, city every year they build a house so like all the classes go and they try to build at least rough frame a house I didn't wow. know that. that's I didn't even know that was a thing in high school so now I'm <laughs> trying to get in contact with him saying like hey if you've got some people that either want a summer job or want some work mm-hmm. after school come over here like I'll pay them uh, Great idea. Obviously, but to get those kids like involved or if I'm if I'm in Menominee Falls, which is a city nearby, to grab kids from that school to come over and help. If I'm in Whitefish Bay, we go over there. So like taking kids from that school and put them into the, the actual build process, I mm-hmm. think would be a super cool um, like introduction into like the real world of construction or real estate. But there's obviously some like legal stuff that goes on where of course I just we're just like- trying to get through. I feel like it's hard to get kids into real estate like sales because it is such a commission-based job. It doesn't have like a fancy salary, you know, like Facebook's coming out with like all these great salaries and everything like that. And like in real estate, it's like, well, you have to earn what you make. And so many Mm -hmm. kids now aren't wanting to earn what they make. They just want it to be given to them, you know? Yeah. 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 I think we just had a big transformation into W-2 and that just is like the norm now. Yep. Like the the W-2 salary is like the standard. Mm -hmm. We're we're like, hey, we're over here and we're like, hey, there's another way to do it. Yeah. You can make more money over here. Well, and I think there's a balance because I have, you know, even with working for my broker, she had me on a, you know, half and half. So I did make I was a, I'm, I'm a W2 in one side, but then also any deals or anything I work on, you get that commission. I think in the beginning for young kids, I think you create that, you know, base pay so that they feel like I'm they can not get working for free, right? You know, because out of yeah. college, depending on what your parents are willing to help you with, there's a lot of kids don't have anything that could pay right. for everything themselves, right? So you still need to make it attractive, but yeah, there, there's something about, being able to catch the fish you eat right yeah yeah so I think as long as they can survive on whatever stipend they get from the broker then they can get a smaller commission you know yeah Yeah. it's and like I'll let the details out when when I start the brokerage (laughs) um because I've already taken my brokerage test and then I found out from the state I didn't have I didn't have the points to take oh, the test. Oh yeah. I was yeah, short. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm working on that. And then once that started, like I've already thought about, cause when I started, I had a kid and I couldn't go just cold Turkey. No, no base. Nice. It was super hard. So I had to do my agent stuff on the side and keep my W2. And I thought like, okay, when I start my brokerage, I want to be able to get those people that, all right, I'm scared of going, losing my W2. I need some money to live on mm -hmm. um, and creating kind of like a draw system where you're going to get your pay every two weeks, but your commission is going to come off of that draw. But once you get your closing and you, and you get past what your draw amount is, then just start making your commission. So they do that. So that's, that's, that is exactly what you should do. Um, yeah. My brother worked for a company out West and it, what they did is they, they chose the sites for these restaurants. So he was part of the real estate team and that was the exact same structure. It was yeah. more about um, there's this draw. And then once you hit over the cap of that draw, then you switch and you click yeah. over and it just gives you a little more. And, you know, he was about to get married and one day start a family. So that is what helped him feel a little more safe and comfortable to one day click over to commission only. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And then it allows him to go full time. Like yeah. The main thing about getting started is you have to do it full time mm -hmm. and it's going to be a lot of work like the first six months. So, well, it's like to, any uh, business. Like I started, yeah. you guys, I no joke during COVID it's, it's June at 19 or whatever, whatever it is. And, or was it 20? Yeah. 20. Yeah. 20. I I'm, I'm like, I have no money. Like I literally wasn't, had no income until October 1st and it was $500 a month. That was my income. And thank God I have a, uh, now fiance who supported me was fantastic but like you it, starting your own business you have nothing you have your cushion mm -hmm. is your savings yeah yep no I started I started my itty bitty like little marketing thing during the height of COVID too and my husband like looks at me he's like who starts a business in the middle of COVID oh wait that's right you do I'm like well can't help yeah me. but Stop. You got to rip that band-aid off and look where yep. it is now. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Take the chance. Take the chance. Yeah. So how long have you been uh, a broker? I have been in, I've done, been in real estate for five years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then do you have a team underneath you in your brokerage or is it? So I have my, there's my broker and I'm under her license. So it's just us yep. two. and. Then for my social media company, which is actually separate, I have two amazing women who work with me. Awesome. So yeah, so That's I'm doing two, cool. two sides. Yep. And you get to split your days in half. Oh, yeah, if that ever happens. <laughs> right. If it's ever that easy. Um, how do you, like, how do you see the benefit of having both running? Is there like a really good, like synergy between the two? Um, is, yeah, so is one more your you, focus or how do you kind of wrap it in your head and like how can you illustrate that to our our viewers like it's doable you can do these brands and you can do multiple things and it all works together so I was telling Natasha I she has a real she told me she has a real estate license I have interviewed or con connected with a lot of different social media marketing companies through everything being remote just to connect in case like I have a client that isn't my fit. I can throw it other people's way. And I yep. found a lot of these businesses don't have their real estate license. They've only been just working in the real estate industry, which I think is totally fine. Like I have no problem with that. What I have found though, and the reason what makes me credible is when I talk to a broker who has three, you know, two to three brokers under or agents underneath them, and they need help with their social media. I can tell them, I know an LOI is, which is at least in a negotiation. Yeah. Like I can't, or a letter of intent. And so I can actually tell them, I know where you're at. I know what you're going through. I've seen a deal in and out and it closed. And so let me Mm -hmm. I have more credibility having the license and then continuously acting upon it because you can get a license, but if you never use it, things change. 
Mm -hmm. yep. Like there's always continuing education, like right. even just doing the continuing education. And that's what I do. I don't utilize my yeah. license, but I keep up with the education. Yeah, which is be just as pill. important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. So whether or not I think you should do both, uh, you know, I think that's up to what the structure of your business is and what you want. I just love real estate. I love how a deal works. I love working with others and I'm a salesperson. So I'm about making that deal happen and most creative way, but also helping others be successful. And that's why I do both and want to always do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I personally am on the same side as you being licensed, getting that continuing education for me was super important. Um, but I did look objectively is getting my agent license the best thing for me. Um, Cause as I'm listening to other people and other investors who have a huge, massive portfolio, but are just not interested in getting their license. Um, and the reasons why were just super fascinating to me. Um, like wholesaling, that's mm -hmm. a market that I don't think I'm gonna touch because I'm licensed. It gets really gray um, in the way of, all right, I'm an agent, I'm supposed to act in your, I'm a fiduciary, I'm supposed to work in your best interest. But if I come in as a wholesaler, and I've got my agent license and I don't disclose something and get a signature like that can come back to bite me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's pluses and minuses to everything. But for me and my business, like getting my agent license was the, the best thing. Um, and the WRA is super good with, Hey, this is going to change July 1st and they'll send it out three months in advance. So like how you have to acknowledge on the, um, real estate condition report, like mm -hmm. how you have to do that now starting, I don't, I'm throwing out a January 1st or July 1st, they'll send that out, give you articles before. So then when I go into my CE every even year, like I'm like, oh yeah, I read that email. That's how it goes now. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are the things that you wouldn't get updated. They wouldn't be sent to you. You'd have to go seek out what's new every month or what's changing every month. Yeah. Um, I also feel like it's like college too right and I, for me I never had a choice to go to college it was like oh you go to college that's what everybody does so right. there was no choice so for me it was almost the same thing oh you want to go into real estate because I would love to be an investor I would love one day to own properties and do that like that's the next step right and personally yeah. but I for me I'm like oh the first step is you get your license so that when the broker or what the lawyer all everybody's talking about these deals because these deals are very complicated. A home mm -hmm. deal might close with can close within 30 days easy, right? Our deal might take two years. Yeah. So if you don't know the language and you can't communicate and you sound like you have no idea what you're talking about, why would anybody work with you? Right? Yeah. So there's just like a little difference of um, and, and it's just, you're working with a lot more back to city planning, back to codes and all the things you yep. have to do. It's not just, it's not just your home. It's everybody's home. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's like a huge difference between the residential and commercial space. Like there's codes and everything to follow on the residential space. But then when you get to commercial, it's that much more complicated. And there's that many more people that are involved, um, yeah. which is why right now I'm staying out of commercial because yeah. we're. Yeah. We're busy here in residential. Um, I will leave the commercial to the people that love commercial. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely an animal. You've got to worry about, like, I don't have to really worry about, um, like, handicap accessible. Right. For the most part. But in pretty much every commercial building, that's something that you've got to, your doorways to your bathroom, how big your bathroom can be, your hallways, like everything. Everything just gets a little bit more complex and there's more more details to follow so yeah you you in the commercial space you've got a lot going on absolutely yeah, it doesn't stop it doesn't stop doesn't <laughs> stop um well what are your i we just talked last week about like new year's resolutions and all that but i wouldn't call it a new year's resolution but what are your goals for 2022 what did you set for yourself for this year in your business so, yeah so no of course so goals more or less would be to one double my 
uh, res uh, my marketing company. So I work with, I've gone away from working with individual agents who need branding and I've gone more towards small businesses in the industry um, and small brokerages. So one, doubling my business. I am also getting married this year. So yeah, so I'm Congratulations. very excited about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we just imagine you, the sound effects of like fireworks going off right now. Oh, there's fireworks. Wedding yeah. bells. Always. <laughs> Wedding bells everywhere. Yeah, I'm. we're very excited, but it's very stressful because we're, we, we're moving, like we're gonna be buying a house and then I have a business. And so for me, I set goals that were very, um, I didn't set anything too extreme because like, you know what, sometimes you need to know when to set the limit right? and know when yeah. to like, this is all I can handle. Just make so it attainable. that's all it is. It's right. all attainable. Double my business, hire two more people. Actually, I think this was a really cool goal for me is everybody's so remote right now mm -hmm. and everybody's looking to find help. And it's okay if they're out of state and two of the women who work with me are out of state, mm -hmm. but I'm going to try and find people who live in Utah because I'm realizing as much as working from home is great, you still need to have that mm -hmm. in person in contact. And I want somebody to be able to work with me. Yeah. I think I, physically. I know I've had, in fact, I just got let go from a company or I just gave my notice to a company because they were yeah. in Colorado. I was here. Um, it was fine, but there was just a massive lack of communication on their end. And I was like, I, I can't make it work on my end because I can't read your mind and I can't right. figure out what you're wanting because you're not communicating with me. And I was just like, best of luck, but it takes a lot of communication to work remote. It takes a lot of understanding from both parties to work remote. Um, it's, a t it's doable, but it takes, my husband always says it takes it takes a lot of work to work with anybody else, like to hire anybody else. You have to work in order to give them work to do, if that makes sense. Oh, you are so right. <laughs> that is so right. It's so stressful having other people under you because you are specifically responsible for them. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, I had a client meeting in Chicago, actually, um, Tuesday to Wednesday, had a quick trip and I don't, I, I'm still learning how to manage or um, help people be successful. And so bringing one of my team members with me to that meeting, I know what's going on in the meeting. I know what, and I also can handle a lot more than say right. someone who has, you know, isn't in the industry, but is just doing content writing. Right. Um, so it's just learn. Yeah. Learning. It's all a learning curve. It really is. And I think it takes a lot of Again, understanding from the other party as well, knowing that, hey, it's going to be a learning curve for both of us, learning how each person works, um, how to communicate with each other, and just like expectations, I think, too, are a big thing that need to like, you need to set your expectations so they're, you both know what you're wanting. Well, same with bringing it back to 2000, you know, 22 goals, like I needed to set set expectations for myself because I'll hit whatever I put out there. Right. I just don't want to be miserable. Right. Right. And that's kind of what I decided this year too. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be starting an, an, a second business or what, but I just said to myself, I'm like, I want to make sure I have time to do the things that I love doing, which is like making sure I have cookies ready for my son when he brings us a kid home to play with or yeah, dinner made and not at like eight o'clock at night or being able to work out, you know, like I just want right. time for me as well. You know, it's well, did you guys find that, that during COVID, I don't know about you guys, but all of a sudden 2022 hit and everybody I know literally slept for a full week. Like no one, none of, but nobody in my industry answered their phone or got any work done until I think this Monday, oh, because I, everybody had been working their tail off. I wish straight. I've still been working my tail off. So I didn't, get, <laughs> I didn't get the week off. Unfortunately, shoot. I'll, I'll try to get better next year. Right. Right. <sighs> yeah. But, um, it was, uh, you were talking about your goals and 
and I think you kind of alluded to it, like you've got to spend some time on your personal stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously with you and and your husband or fiance, like you want to go into this like full out, like you don't want your wedding to be half-assed. No. So like you've got to you've got to give it time and you only have 24 hours in a day and you've got to maximize the hours. So I think you're realistic of of professional goals and keeping in mind your personal goals and your personal self-care cuz I know starting my business it was not like personal was like the last thing. If I got to the gym once a month, I was super happy. Yeah. Yeah. But well, not overall happy. No, but that's the problem. I think my social life. So I'm a I'm a high extrovert. I love like I get, you can't tell. Right? Who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thought? I've been the same person since I was five years old. Like I have not changed. I am who I am. Right? But I it's I get closer. energized. We could be friends. I ex- trust me. That was the one thing about all of this. Uh, but like. I get energized. My battery gets re-energized by being around people. So that's what suffered. And I think a lot of people suffered from that. Any extrovert, introverts, like my fiance, he works in the other off, the other room in his office. And he could literally not talk to someone for a full 10 hours after he's done working. Oh, I talk to my dogs all day. I, oh, yeah. I have nobody else to talk to. I know. I think you two would get along and then me and your husband would be best friends. <laughs> Work in the same room, not talk for 10 hours. Best friends. Oh, that's funny. But you guys are still very personable. Like, I feel like you do do very well in a group and do what you need to do, shine. And then when you're done, go to go to bed or just be alone. Clock out. Yeah. And that was, that was the Clock big, out. like, light bulb moment for me because like growing up I thought okay extroverts are just the people that like to be in crowds and like to talk and do all that stuff and introverts are the ones that want to stay home and not talk to people and the more and more I like I researched it and read on it it's just about how you recharge I have no problem going out and talking to people going to networking events like talking in front of crowds I mean when I was working in fundraising there were groups where I had to I had to talk in front of like 400 people and that doesn't like, I like it, but if I had to do that every day, all the time, I would have no time to recharge. And my recharge is to go in my office with like jazz music or classical music and just either work or zone out for a little bit. And then I can go do it. Um, So that recharge part that you were talking about, I think that's the key in terms of like introvert extrovert Um, and the awareness of it is, is big for your person absolutely Absolutely. Uh, that's the the little bit of my psychology degree (laughs) put to the max at that point that's about all I got (laughs) psychology degree in real estate um what has been in your starting like starting phase you got to go back like five years maybe four Mm -hmm. years in your prep what would you say was your hardest hurdle or learning or teaching moment that you got through to get to where you're at? Oh, that is easy, easy. So I am not a test taker, all right? You guys, C's get degrees. And I'm not saying I'm not smart. It's just books, like reading a book and retaining the information. I don't have the patience. I would rather be in the field, learning the experience. And then like, same with language, right? Like me taking a language class, I did not do well because I didn't care. But if you take me to Italy or, or Spain or Mexico or wherever, I'll learn the language in two seconds. So it was like, I had to uh, get my license. And it was the first real test, studying and real tests I had done since college. And I remember just like, I hate every moment of this. This is horrible, but I loved it because I actually, you know, in college, I don't know, in high school, college, you really, I don't know if anybody really cares about, I think people who go to be doctors and know what they want to do. It's a little different for me. I just wanted to be working in real life experience. So my biggest hurdle was actually taking the test. Like I, I failed twice and like, I like failed the first one and I failed one half like pass one half and then pass the second half the third time. But in my mind, I was like, I'm so glad I did it 
I got through yeah. it. And I'm the first person to say like, tutors are amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. And so you got so yeah. much more, you got so much more immersion in the information by taking it. Oh yeah. Two times and studying again and studying again and studying again. You studied more than the people that took it the first time and got it. So for sure. Oh, you've my, been more fr- my friend just with- got it. Yeah. That's is she joining you? No, but my one of my guy friends just took the exam and he studied for two weeks and passed the first time. Like I was just sitting there, I'm like, but I, I don't even I'm past the age of of being jealous or angry at people like that. I more or less am like, we have different our brain works different for sure because I I opened the books I like crammed I did everything I did I passed my uh, my test all within like a month I was like I'll do it I'll figure it out I'll just cram for three weeks and then I'll take the test my husband's like okay good luck yeah okay yeah but learning something that you're interested in does change the game because just like you in high school like I was I was there for sports like I just mm-hmm. wanted to play sports. So what GPA do I need to play sports? Okay, yeah. I need a, a two one or a two three, whatever it was. Perfect. I'll get you a two four. And like <laughs> that was my that was my baseline. Um, so it it wasn't. I didn't feel like I was dumb. I didn't feel like I didn't get the material. I just didn't want to apply it. Like there was nothing yeah. in me. There was no fire burning that was like, all right, really, I want to learn about medieval civilization and the people who i i don't i don't care like i'll learn about their castle that was cool right like I'll, right that was fun but like i don't whoever the king was at the time i've got no idea and i think that was my downfall because once i got into real estate i've got no problem reading books and reading extra i'm not a reader but i find myself reading at least two three times a week now you just have to find which, what what like piques your interest what you're what you want more of yeah oh i i feel like all i do is read it's awesome but it's in in it's in areas that i care about and it's even about you know it's going from you know what's the development or the climate change all the stuff that really has a lot to do like i have a client who just moved from uh industrial to land and so she's changing her whole business to land with this new brokerage. And so I now have to learn about the real estate of land. Like how does a land deal work? Crops, farmers, you know, all this. And she's in California. So we're dealing with, uh, you know, the drought. We're dealing with like crazy heat and the fires. And so I have to now learn about a totally different climate, a totally different in- industry. It's awesome. It's, I, I'm like, all right, let's go. And I just read, read, read. Cause I have to create content for their whole team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a lot. Big undertaking. I that math. Huge. In my head and I was like, oh, that's, that's like a whole new job. Yeah. Oh, it is. A, that's why you, that's why I'm, my goal is to hire two more people Hi. because but, you're like, how, how, yeah, sure. Right. When uh, closer. that's going to be a super good tool to have in your tool belt as your career progresses, like the more mm-hmm. avenues you can get into and the more subsects of real estate that you can learn on. Like when you're a decade in from here, you're going to have so many more tools, which is going to make you more and more sought after mm-hmm. Right. as you progress. So like the, the learning process is where where it's all about like when you're doing this just keep learning that's what i found and i was talking to someone and i don't know if you have the same view on it but to sum up what they said because i cannot articulate the way that they said it they said you're you're done as a business when you're done learning and there are people out there that say they're in i'm in real estate for 20 years but really they've been in real estate for one year and they've just been doing that for 20 years right or you're actually in real estate for 20 years and you're continuing to learn and learn about the different aspects. Those are the people that have been in it for 20 years that have, that are like trying to complete their sphere rather than just take a a piece of it. Right. And for me that like sat in my head and I was like, that's a really good kind of like formalized picture to paint. 
on mm -hmm. education and, and where you could take it. Right. I also think to go off of that, because that, I think that's very accurate, that also um, shows what type of like brain or, or type of personality type you are. Mm -hmm. Because the person who's always, you know, I my dad always taught me this thing that's really stuck with me is there's the A personality and there's the B personality. And it has nothing to do with who's smarter and who's better and blah, blah, blah. The A is the person who has the dream, who's continuously going and learning and has the dream. The B is who gets it done. Oh, And so it's yeah. almost like who, the person who's constantly dreaming and going, they have a team under them. They have that B who executes every single thing and helps them get where they are. Now that B could change throughout the years, those 20 years. But then a lot of the time, the people who stay in one spot, they're really only good at getting the work done. They might not be the dreamer or the person who's always looking to expand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I thought that type A, type B thing was super cool. Um, and I just read a book uh, th maybe three months ago, uh, The Road Back to You, and it talks about the mm. Enneagram. And then mm -hmm. I went deep into the Enneagram to find out like what number I am and what wing I have. And it's crazy how accurate that stuff is. Have you ever taken the Enneagram? Yeah, I've done. There's a couple personality tests I've taken and they are always dead on. It, when you, yeah. when you actually like answer them honestly, yeah, you know, like, I think that you have to get that filter off and you have to kind of do it a couple of times. I took yep. one through, I think it was through Keller Williams. They give you yeah. like two or three exams that you have to take before they even interview you. Holy cow. It, it was me to a T like, I was like, For sure. well, I'll give this to whoever wants to hire me next. So they can see how my brain works. Yeah. Like they've oh, got the, very, disc, very the Myers Briggs. Yeah. The yep. And I think a prerequisite for any of those tests is to have like a couple glasses of wine <laughs> like take down the frontal lobe a little bit. That's going to, that's like your screening process of what you don't want people to know because it's just for you. So take a couple glasses of wine and then take your test and you'll find out like that's deep down where I'm at. If I'm not filtering myself, like this is me. Yeah. And as long as you're cool with being labeled, they're interesting. Oh, I, I feel like people that don't want to be put in a box are like, that's, I know. it's not true. Which I get it. That's fine. That's fine. I have no problem with labeling, right. label all you want. I just want to learn how to get better. And I, if you can learn what your skill set is and what you're good at, then you can, you know, and clearly communicate that. It's nice. It's a nice feeling. I totally get that. Um, I think we lost Marcus. I think he uh, got kicked off. So, um, that being said, typically we ask one last question before we sign off for the day. And I don't okay. know, um, what I typically ask is, do you have any like DIY projects that you've done, like that you're really proud of? Um, like what type? Like what? Like, I mean, it could be, it could be painting a bedroom. It could be, oh. you know, doing something in the garden. It could be, you know, <laughs> installing a bar. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I actually do. Uh, we live in a cute little two bedroom, two bath and our, so it, everything was renovated except for the kitchen. Sure. Like it was, but it like, I don't really like what it looks like. It's really ugly and we don't own it. And so I haven't painted it yet, but I re I, so there's like this bar or like Island slash bar that comes out and has four bar chairs. And I put band board and painted the back of the bar white oh, cool. so that it actually cleanly matched with the rest of the condo. Cause oh. everything's like this color sure. white. Like sure. this needs to be painted. Like this is horrible. It's a mustard color for all the viewers. <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs> so that said, that's what our cupboards are and it's horrible. So I painted that white and then, and like had a nail gun and put all the wood up and did this, uh, the siding, it was fantastic, or the molding. Holy and God. then it was awesome. And then the second project, I got a, <laughs> I got all the tile off. Oh, I wow. removed all the tile, cut out all the 
drywall and had a guy come in and re put the drywall in for our backsplash in Love our kitchen. That I know right now, I don't know if you can see in my background, my, uh, my walls, I'm in the, in the process of skim coating all of my walls in my house because they were all Ooh. really ugly texture. And I, yep. one day I was just like, I told my husband, I'm like, it can't be that hard. Right. Oh my God. Three rooms later. Oh, it's, like even just doing the little project I did, it took three days. I was sweating. I have to say though, my arms are like rocking after this project. <laughs> <laughs> so it's worth it for me. It's awesome. I know. I need more passion projects like this because I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. I was talking to my husband this morning. I'm like, I need to find something that I can do that's like this all the time. He's like, oh boy. Yeah. It's going to get expensive. I'm like, I know, but I need to do it for other people. Oh, well, now I know. But that's the hard part. Once you start doing for other people, it's not. It's not fun anymore. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Mark. Work. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. My phone just randomly wants to shut off on me. Oh, so. well, we're happy you came back and just in time to say goodbye. I know. I'm guessing that was the DIY question. It was. It was. It was. It was. I'll have to listen to the show. I'm not gonna let you, I'm not gonna make you repeat it. I'll listen <laughs> to the show, find out what it is. Perfect. I mean, I'm sure it was good. Um, you've got a lot I of things going, impressive. very talented. So I oh, appreciate you. your time. Thank you for sharing with the audience. Um, what is the best way for people to get a hold of you? The best way to get a hold of me is my handle on Instagram is Lavasco, L O V, as in Victor, A S C O, creative group. That's the best way. Awesome. Awesome. We'll put that in yep. the show notes. Um, cool. And then if any viewers want to get a hold of you, reach out. Um, wealth of knowledge. We only got to talk you to you for an hour, but a wealth of knowledge. So thank you very well, much for sharing. Thank you for the opportunity. It was such a pleasure. It was great to meet you guys. This was awesome. That's you too. Beautiful. Next time, I promise I will not be chaos. Well, uh, well you own not, your own business. It so it is pure chaos. chaos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I appreciate working through the, the little hurdles that I had to jump through today. So thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.